Greetings, audiophiles and Mass Effect fans. Welcome to my reading of of my fanfiction, After the Fall. This is a Mass Effect fanfiction, and as such, most of the characters and the universe belong to Bioware slash EA Games. No copyright infringement is intended. However, the scenario and occurrences within this fanfiction are my intellectual property, so if you decide you want to share this with someone, credit me. Please. Part 4. Report. Shepard was allowed a few more days of quiet. One visitor at a time, mostly Garrus, under the stern watchful eye of the nurse. Just when Shepard thought she might try getting out of bed, testing exactly how bad her injuries were, in an attempt to find out what was going on with the rest of the galaxy, her crew stormed her room. Tally was in the lead, followed, in wedge formation, Shepard noticed appreciatively, by Liara, Caden, Joker, Garrus, Grunt, and Rex. Shepard was greeted and hugged by all. Grunt had rushed her, exclaiming, Mother! and hugged her so tightly she made a little yelp and Rex had to pry the young Krogan away. Rex himself settled for trapping her hand in a grip that might have broken the fingers of a lesser woman. Greetings finished, the group arranged themselves about the room. Garrison Joker sitting on her bed, Liara and Tali up and pacing, and everyone else locating chairs. Shepard gazed at her people lovingly, taking in all their faces. Her throat tightened as she thought of those who were no longer with them. Morden, Thane. Their memories were still fresh in her mind. It seemed there was an empty space in the room where they might have stood. All right, everyone, Shepard said, sensing they were all awaiting her to begin the conversation. Report, please, I'm going crazy in here. Tally was holding a data pad and handed it to Shepard, speaking as her commander read. The Destiny Ascension with the Council aboard went down in battle. A brief power vacuum occurred and Admiral Hackett and I did our best to fill it. Everyone was clamoring for you, Shepard. I'm glad we found you. Tally's words carried more than just pleasure at no longer having to bear as much of the leadership role but also a clear joy at having found her dear friend. Who else did we lose? Shepard asked, flicking her thumb across the data pad screen to scroll down. Semera and Jack did not make it, I'm afraid, Liara said gently. They both died bravely. Samara was killed when she managed to create a barrier powerful enough to deflect a reaper shot. She saved an entire group of Turians, allowing them to retreat. And Jack? She and her students were on the front line. They took out hundreds of the Reaper creatures before they went down, fighting to the last man. A memorial is planned, Tally intoned solemnly, but everyone agreed we'd like you to attend, Shepard, once you're on your feet again. That won't be long, Shepard said fiercely, propping herself more upright against her pillows. It hurt, but she never showed it. Her mind was already in full gear. She was a fine military commander, but she wasn't sure that she could pull the residents of Earth and what remained of the Victory Fleet back together. Her face remained set, never hinting to her people how uneasy she felt. Javik? she asked tentatively. Alive, Tally assured her, and Shepard felt welcome relief. He's been helping out with the rescue and rebuilding efforts. He's been tireless. Joker told me that the mass relays are down, Shepard pressed on. She needed all the information before she started to worry about too many small pieces. It seems so, Tally said, idly wringing her hands. Shepard watched Tally's body language. She knew Quarian culture relied heavily on physical communication to replace facial expressions. What's up, Tally? Well, it's just... We can't seem to communicate with anyone outside of the soul system, and with the relays down... What... what about... Shepard began, but Liara cut her off. I know what she wanted to ask. The quantum entanglement communication Admiral Hackett had been using to keep us up to date on the Crucible. Remember, Commander, that the system is strictly point to point. Hackett's ship came to Seoul with the Crucible. So we could communicate with it, but why? Because we can already call up Hackett's ship on the normal comm channels, Caden chimed in. Correct, 
Liara nodded sadly. Wait, wasn't that how we used to communicate with the elusive man? Garrus sat up, jostling Shepard's leg. She winced. Sorry, love. He patted her knee gently. Liara stopped pacing, snapping her fingers. We had another connection. I have no idea if it's still active or if we can restore it, but I can give it a try. Wasn't Hackett firing on that base right before the Citadel appeared over Earth? Garrus questioned. He might have destroyed it. He might not have, Tally pointed out, catching a little bit of the excitement. Comms are down outside of Seoul, but there's hope of the elusive man's base is still in one piece? Shepard smiled, her old sarcastic side showing itself. So basically we're screwed, right? Right, Liara smiled, but brought the topic back to task before Joker joined in and the whole thing devolved. The bad thing about discovering the mass relays was that no one found the need to develop long-distance FTL travel. It would take us years to get to the nearest inhabited system. So what are we looking at? How long have we got before we're out of resources? Shepard scanned their faces. She was ignoring the data pad, preferring to get the information straight from her people. We are not as bad off as could have been expected, Tally explained. The resources of Earth might not stretch far, but we are not going to starve to death tomorrow. The Reapers focused on large populations and cities, leaving the agricultural areas alone. I know the humans have several hydroponic farms on the moon and Mars. I'm glad you encouraged us to bring the live ships into Battle Shepherd. They are able to provide dextro food for Quarians and Turians. Though I have to say, I'm hoping the dextro rations last a bit longer. Garrus said wryly. I've seen what Quarians eat, and I might be able to digest it, but I don't know if my taste buds will let me swallow it. Tally shot Garrus a glare, which Shepard knew was more playful than angry. Garrus does bring up a good point. While the Victory Fleet might not have been overburdened with provisions, we do have quite a few military rations to see us through. We'll try not to eat you out of house and home, said Rex, showing his teeth in a grin that would have looked like a snarl if they didn't know him. We'd appreciate that, Shepard chuckled. At least we didn't bring many Krogan to Earth. Right, agreed Rex. While we were taking on the Reapers here in the Soul System, my people have been retaking planets. He nodded to Garrus. We've almost certainly gotten your planet back. You're welcome. No arguing here, Garrus raised both hands. I'll be the first to personally thank every Krogan soldier that helped reclaim Palavin. I'll hold you to that, Rex laughed. Liara cleared her throat. I'm concerned about communications, Shepard. I don't like it that we can't reach anyone outside the system. Shepard knew what Liara was getting at. Some of the crew knew that the young Astari was the famous Shadow Broker, but not all. For the Shadow Broker to suddenly drop off the radar... That seriously narrowed down where he or she could be, not to mention opened up the position for someone else to fill it. Shepard knew that if Liara wanted to have any hope of continuing as the mysterious information trader, they would have to get communications working, and soon. Still, there were more pressing matters at hand. She knew the score as far as the dead went, and no one was going to starve for the moment, so another question needed answering. The Reaper corpses? We've evacuated people from all the cities where the corpses are laying. This limits our shelter, but we don't need anyone getting indoctrinated, Tally explained. I know Reaper corpses could indoctrinate before, but can they still? Shepard asked, eyebrows knitted together. We're not 100% sure, Tally said, clasping her hands together in a gesture which Shepard knew conveyed unease. We have soldiers that were evacuated from Reaper areas reporting symptoms that sound like early indoctrination. We're not taking any chances. Why would the Reapers indoctrinate after they're dead? I thought that shockwave you sent out destroyed their Reaper brains or something. Joker tugged at the brim of his hat nervously. We don't know. Liara paced the room a few times. At this point, we don't know much at all. We're just keeping everyone away. It's not easy. Tally said. Scientists of every species are eager to study the Reapers. Not us, Rex growled. We're the ones doing most of the security duty. Making sure nobody sneaks in to have a peek at the dead monsters. Well, us, along with the Rachni, which is awkward. 
At least until we figure out how to burn the corpses or whatever needs to be done to the Reapers. And the ones in space? Shepard asked. We are keeping away from those two, Tally assured her, until we can figure out a surefire way to destroy them. It takes a lot of effort to blow one up. Even dead, they still have armor. Then you have pieces flying everywhere, hitting ships, falling into orbit and onto Earth. Sounds like a hassle. Shepard shook her head. Her mind was buzzing with questions, ideas, possible plans. She shot each plan down as she thought it. She didn't know what to do. That wasn't a normal feeling for her. I'm a little worried about something else, Shepard. Caden spoke, sitting forward in his chair and lacing his fingers together. This alliance we formed, it's very new. We came together against something huge, something galaxy-ending. But now we're all trapped in one place, have limited supply chains, and only became friends because something terrible was facing us all. I've already heard rumbling from some of the Earth's anti-alien groups. Shepard winced. She'd been a member of one of those in her youth, the Reds. In reality, she had only joined because she hadn't been given a choice. They promised her food and shelter. Back then, the Reds were a juvenile group. They perpetuated petty crimes, defacing diplomatic buildings, intercepting shipments of food intended for alien shelters or gathering places. They busted up a few Dextro soup kitchens as well. In recent years, she had only heard from the Reds once, and she had told them to go fuck off. Could other groups like them, or even the Reds themselves, be plotting against the new alliance? The other races? Shepard asked, her muscles tensing. She needed to get out of there, and soon. The Salarian STG is a bit vocal in their distrust of the Krogan guarding the Reapers, but no actual fights have broken out. Caden glanced sideways at Rex and Grunt. That's because they know we'd take them apart if they tried. Rex? Shepard warned. I'm keeping my people in check, Shepard. I keep reminding them that they have mates and babies waiting at home because of a Salarian. I'm counting on you, Rex. Shepard's voice was commanding and military. The Krogan responded best to a firm tone. Rex nodded. This pup is a big help as well. He slapped Grunt on the back. The gesture would have broken the ribs of a Turian, but Grunt was barely moved. The young Krogan smiled a little crookedly. They can't argue with superior genes. I'm doing my best to keep an eye on the Asari. Liara strode to the door and looked down the hall to make sure no one was listening in. Sadly, I'm not well respected amongst my people. To them, I'm still a child, and still the daughter of a traitor. Shepard nodded sadly but understandingly. And the Quarians? Eager to help, Tally said proudly. Turians as well, Garrus pointed out, his mandibles flaring. Shepard sensed the friendly rivalry between her two friends was showing itself again. She smiled slightly. If the two of them could bicker, it meant things were not going too badly out there. Not yet, anyway. By the look they were giving each other, she almost expected them to start comparing their kill count from the battle, and she let herself relax. Caden didn't let her relax for long. He looked a little sorry as he went on with his report. The ones we predict having the most trouble with are Arya's people. You may have helped them retake their home, but they're far from it now, and lacking their leader. And they're criminals! Is that what you're trying to say? Joker asked, blunt as ever. Well, yes it is. Caden took Joker's comment in his stride. We'll have to keep our eyes on them. So what now? Shepard asked, knowing the answer full well. You need to get out there, Shepard. Rex answered flatly. Agreed, Shepard said. As soon as possible, I need to get out of this bed and address these people. They need leadership. A new council, perhaps. She liked the idea more and more as she spoke it. Garrus, I'd like you representing Turians. Tali, you'll speak for your people. Rex, you will be the new Krogan... counselor. About time, Rex smiled toothily. Too bad it took the galaxy almost ending to get a Krogan on the council. This council may not last, Shepard warned. But we have to have something. We need everyone represented. Did Kirihi make it through? Caden pulled a data pad from the pack he wore at his waist. After a few moments, he looked up from the pad, orange light washing over his stubble chin. Kirihi is still MIA, Commander. Damn. Shepard clenched her hand into a fist. The others may have thought she was upset over the loss of a potential council member, but in reality, she was worried for her friend. 
She and Kira, he thought very much alike. He was a truly stalwart soldier and would be sorely missed if he was found dead. For the moment, she allowed herself to hope that he was still alive out there somewhere. If possible, she would search for him herself. Her body may have protested, but Shepard's mind was too strong for it. She could overcome any pain to fulfill whatever mission she set her teeth into, though her tongue did prod a spot where one of her teeth had been knocked out. His second in command was found, Caden said, squinting at the data pad, looking pleased with himself. Rentola, wasn't it? asked Liara. Yes, Caden confirmed with a flick of his thumb. Get him, for the moment at least, Shepard instructed, and Caden nodded, adding a new name to the list he had been creating. The Asari representative? asked Liara hesitantly. You! Shepard spoke offhandedly, as though Liara was silly to have asked. But Shepard, they may not respect you now, but if you stand up beside the other leaders and prove that you have their interests at heart, you'll win them over. I have complete faith in your skills. Shepard shot Liara a wink. If the Shadow Broker couldn't figure this out, then who could? Humanity? Caden's fingers hovered over the small letter keys on the data pad. Admiral Hackett, of course. Shepard lay back against her pillow. Her friends all glanced at one another. We were actually thinking of you, Shepard. Me? But I'm a soldier. I make a lousy politician. Hack is a soldier, too. You yourself said this new council was likely temporary, Garrus pointed out, taking one of her hands. I... but... well... For once in her life, Commander Lorelei Shepard did not know what to say. She looked into the eyes of her crew, and they gave her a firm order. Finally, she just smiled. Fine, but this has to be temporary. It better be, said Garrus, smiling as he spread his mandibles. I don't want to go into politics any more than you do. I'll make sure someone finds Javik. If people see that we have a Prothean on our side, it will go a long way. Caden put the data pad back in its pouch. The group hashed out a few more details, then dispersed. All but Garrus, who insisted on staying with Shepard. He sat in the chair beside her bed while she pretended to doze. In reality, her thoughts were active as ever. In her mind's eye, she walked the halls of her beloved Normandy. She gave orders as naturally as she breathed. It had seemed obvious for her to appoint a new council, and for her people to listen when she told them they should be on it. Slowly it dawned on her what she had truly done. Everyone, not only all the humans, but every race trapped in the Sol system was looking to her for leadership. That was a new feeling. A frightening feeling. She would have to try harder than she ever had, succeed more readily than before. She couldn't let these people down. Even as her mind filled and spun with these weighty thoughts, she pictured herself standing before the galaxy map, choosing a destination for her ship. Garrus, she mumbled. Yes. He leaned towards her, setting aside his reading. You know how we talked about retiring someplace warm? And living off the royalties from the vids? I don't think I can do that. Hmm? I think I'll still be running and gunning on alien planets, putting down VI attackers and discovering new relics until I'm old and gray. Garrus's hand closed firmly around hers. I only said those things about retiring because I thought we were going to die. I'd go insane inside of two minutes.